Welcome to a very foggy Prague, a city I have dreamed of visiting for so long. If you're just joining me on this adventure, I'm currently on a Eurail trip around Europe. I started in Vienna before heading east to Bratislava. After Bratislava, I hopped on a direct train for about four hours and arrived in the evening here in Prague in the Czech Republic. Good morning from Prague. I am climbing up a big old <laughs> hill of stairs to go to Prague Castle. I thought it seemed like a good place to start this whole thing, so. We're at the castle. Little fun fact for you. This castle holds the Guinness World Record for the largest castle, I believe, in the world. It is 70,000 square meters. So uh, let's go inside, shall we? Tickets to the Prague Castle cost 250 Czech crowns, or about 10 US dollars. However, you do not need a ticket to enter the courtyard of the castle. There's usually a line, but that is simply because they are checking bags and there's a metal detector to walk through. You don't actually get your tickets until you are inside the courtyard area. The ticket includes entrance to St. George's Basilica, the Old Royal Palace, St. Vitus Cathedral, and the cute and quirky Golden Lane. I recommend entering near St. George's Basilica and exiting near Golden Lane. And I also recommend coming as early as possible to avoid the huge lines at the entrance that start forming around 10.30 a.m. Eventually, the fog cleared, and I had a beautiful morning to walk back towards the Prague Old Town, through hidden gardens and across famous bridges. After leaving the castle, I decided to make a stop at the Franz Kafka Museum. Franz Kafka was born in Prague, and while he never outright admitted it, it's believed that Prague was the backdrop, or at least the inspiration, for many of the stories and novels that he wrote throughout his life. The rest of the morning and midday was spent wandering around the winding streets of the historic Old Town. The main square was without a doubt the busiest place I visited in Prague. It's absolutely stunning and I'm so glad that I visited, but it's also absolutely packed with people. Even on a chilly autumn weekday, I can't imagine how bustling the city must be on a weekend in July. There's one thing that I was most excited about visiting Prague for, something the city and the Czech Republic in general is incredibly famous for, the beer. I decided to book onto a historical pub tour through Get Your Guide, who are kindly the sponsors of today's video. I've raved about Get Your Guide and their local tours for years, and this historical pub tour was exactly the type of activity that I knew I would love. It was less of a pub crawl and more of a history lesson with fun people and great beer. The tour guide told us about the architecture that we passed along the way. We went down side streets and through alleys that I never would have walked down. And we stopped at four fun pubs to learn about the different types of Czech beer and of course, to sample them as well. I finished the evening with a sunset cruise that I also booked through Get Your Guide. You can take the tour at any time of day, but I liked the idea of closing out the evening with a little bit more history and a tour around the Charles Bridge. For under $20 per person, you can enjoy a drink and a snack on board these old style wooden boats. They also give you headphones which you plug into the boat and allows you to listen to an audio guide as the driver shows you old pictures of the city and you learn about what Prague was like over the last few centuries. I got off the boat just in time to see an incredible sunset over the Charles Bridge. I'll link to both tours in the description below. The next morning, I was up bright and early to explore more of Prague, starting with the National Library of the Czech Republic.
You can only visit the library with a tour, but it's well worth waiting in line and climbing up all the stairs with a huge group of other tourists just to see this incredible library that hasn't been changed or restored since it was originally built in the 18th century. The tour also includes a visit to the old astronomical tower, which offers incredible views back over Prague. After leaving the library, I headed over to the Old Jewish Quarter. I recommend starting at the Information Center, where you can pick up a ticket to all of the sites around the Jewish Quarter for 29 euros, which also includes an audio guide. The ticket gives you entrance to one of the oldest synagogues in Europe, the Old Jewish Cemetery, the Pinkas Synagogue, which is home to a very powerful Holocaust memorial, the ornate Spanish Synagogue, and a few other museums that are well worth visiting to learn more about the history of the Jews in Prague and in this whole region of Europe. To refuel, I decided to try the Czech version of tapas, or schmorbrot, or bruschetta, depending on which part of the world it reminds you of most. These open-faced sandwiches are called klebiček, they were a bargain lunch option at only 45 crown each, and two was more than enough. From here I walked south along the riverfront, passing by the rotating head of Franz Kafka, the dancing house building, and finally down to Vishirad. Vishirad is an old fortification and hill that looks out over the Vltava River. Besides being a nice place to walk around with winding paths and plenty of benches to relax and enjoy the views, Vishirad also has one of the most ornate and beautiful churches I've seen on this whole trip, the St. Peter and Paul Basilica. The outside has stunning mosaics over the door and inside Every inch of the church appears to be painted with stunning nature-inspired frescoes. I walked back towards my hotel, which was on the other side of the river, and I discovered more cool sites like the Lenin Wall and the Hunger Wall, which was built back in the 1360s to defend the Prague Castle. The wall is within the same park as the Petron Tower, an Eiffel Tower looking structure that sits atop a hill and looks out over the city. Every evening in Prague, I made sure to try some traditional food, and I found both the bread and potato dumplings to be so addictive. The perfect accompaniment to the different stewed meats that you can enjoy. It was also some of the most affordable food I found on this entire trip, with most meals costing under $10, and some like this duck and dumpling only costing $6. I will link in the description below to my full guide I wrote on the blog, which shares all of the amazing restaurants and dishes I tried while I was in Prague. I am so sad to be heading back to the train station and leaving Prague. This has been such an awesome trip. I need to come back <laughs> ASAP. Three days was not enough time, so... Uh... I hope you enjoyed exploring Prague with me. I am all 